Calling all WordPress users. Have you heard the news about the new WordPress 6.5 update? This update is packed with new features to enhance your website creation experience. So in this video, I'll be discussing each one in detail to help you understand the impact and potential on your website. So get ready and let's check out what the newest WordPress update has to offer. WordPress 6.5 will be available to everyone on April 2nd, 2024. The highlight of this update is the merger of Gutenberg version 16.8 to 17.7 and hundreds of core track tickets. Related to that, some new features are paving the way for the Gutenberg Phase 3 project. If you aren't familiar with that, the end goal of the new phase is to implement real-time collaboration within the WordPress editor. If you're curious about other WordPress news, first hit that subscribe button and then turn on your notifications to be in the know of our latest videos. There will be a lot more WordPress tips, tutorials, and knowledge resources like this, so don't miss out. Okay, let's take a closer look at the new font library within WordPress latest release. The idea of a dedicated font management interface has been around for almost two years now. It was kicked off with the introduction of the Web Fonts API in WordPress 6.0, allowing users to register new fonts via the theme.json. Its development went on until it was scheduled for release with the WordPress 6.4 last year, but however, the feature was delayed due to code quality concerns. Given these facts, if you're someone who's waiting for this font library feature, congratulations, it's finally here. Now you can easily upload fonts or import them from Google Fonts to the block editor. The font library interface is available under the site editor whenever you're using a block theme. You can access this feature by navigating to appearance and clicking editor. Open the global styles panel, go to the typography section and click the manage fonts icon. I'll demonstrate how to upload the Roboto font using the new font library feature. Click upload font and you'll get a pop-up message asking you to select a file. Select your preferred font format from the available options. In this case, I already have the Roboto font family in TFF format. Therefore, I will go ahead and upload all of them. As you can see, your new font will then appear under the library tab. If you click on it, you can select different font variants for your site. You'll also find the delete button at the bottom if you want to remove it at some point. Since Roboto is a part of Google Fonts, you can also add it via the install fonts tab. It's a shortcut that's integrated into the font library itself, but only for Google Fonts. You can easily search for any font you want to install or browse a specific category to find it. In this case, I shall search for Roboto and select the variants I want to install. Easy as that. This newest WordPress release brings a major upgrade to the site editor. There are new view modes for managing pages, patterns, templates, and template parts. These offer greater flexibility and ease of use, allowing you to explore, filter, and work with the site's components more efficiently. First, the new library presentation reworks lets you choose from a selection of different layouts. You can also personalize the displayed information by hiding or showing specific parts only. To access these settings, simply click the View Options button. For example, you can configure this Templates Management panel to display each template's preview, description, and author. You can also choose between a table and a grid view. Second, if you have multiple users on the site, you can filter the items displayed based on the author. You can find the setting under the search field. Furthermore, under the view options, you'll see this sort by menu, allowing you to sort by its name or author. Third, the new library also lets you select multiple items with faster workflow. For example, you can select some of the items and delete them in one go in the pattern library. If you're managing different templates elements, you can also perform a bulk reset to revert all the changes. However, you can't delete any log patterns and template parts that are native to the theme, so just keep that in mind. Also, remember that the way this feature is implemented will vary based on the library you are using. Ever since site editor and block themes were introduced, developers have been working continuously on improving features for classic themes. WordPress 6.5 continues this effort by introducing appearance tools for those classic themes. If you're not familiar with appearance tools, they include border, margin, and block spacing settings. They can be beneficial for adding more customization options to a group of blocks while editing a page. Let's take a closer look at the example below. You can add a border to a group block, which will help make it stand out or separate from other content. You can also adjust the border settings to change its color, thickness, and radius. Currently, you have to enable the support yourself by adding this code snippet to the functions.php file. 
I recommend testing out this feature first using a child theme though. Otherwise, it will get removed after the next theme update. There was no front-end navigation regarding the pattern management panel for classic themes. If you're not familiar with it, this is where you can see the list of synced and unsynced patterns and edit or manage them. Previously, users could only access it by typing a specific slug. Although this may seem like a minor addition, it can actually improve the user's overall workflow. And if you work with classic themes, you can now manage the pattern simply by heading to Appearance and choosing Patterns. Changing a WordPress site icon is a relatively simple task to do, but in fact, it's still one of the most asked questions by WordPress beginners. Currently, block theme users can do it by using the site icon block, while classic theme users should do it from the customizer page. WordPress 6.5 will ship with an even easier solution. Simply navigate the settings, select General, and you'll see the option to change your site's icon. Do you want to bring some excitement to your WordPress site? Well, you can now add a randomized gallery with a single shortcode. This means every time a visitor reloads a page, those images will appear in a different order. To do this, simply upload the images to the media library and take note of each image's media ID. Then include those media ideas in the shortcode like this. Just ensure that the media ideas are correct. Then paste the code into the block editor. Oh, and ensure you're pasting that code as plain text. Otherwise, the shortcode won't be parsed and transformed into a gallery block. Save your changes and try visiting the website. See, every time you refresh a page, your image placement will change. Pretty cool if you ask me. The WordPress Interactivity API is a new way to add interactions between blocks on the front end. For example, you can now add items to a shopping cart and favorite a post without reloading, making the whole experience much more responsive. This API has been in the development for quite a while, and some of its features can be felt in the loadless query loop pagination in WordPress 6.4. However, the API was still in the development and experimental phase at that point. With the new WordPress release, the API will be available to the public, allowing developers and enterprises to incorporate into their themes, blocks, and websites. Okay, let's quickly break it down. There are two main components of the Interactivity API. The first is directives, which are unique attributes added to HTML elements within your block's markup. They define specific behaviors for those elements so they can respond to user interactions or other events. Some common directives include WP Interactive to activate the interactivity and WP Context to provide a local state for the element and other items related to it. The second component is Store. It acts as a central hub that manages everything that's happening within the block. It works like a control center, keeping track of the three key aspects, state, actions, and side effects. State is the data that dictates how the block behaves and looks. Think of it as the block's brain holding all the information it needs to function. Actions can modify the state of the block or perform other tasks whenever a user interacts with it. And side effects work whenever the state changes, springing into action to update the block's appearance on the screen or making API calls. If you want to learn more about the markups for the Interactivity API, you can find the link to the Gutenberg repository down below. WordPress developers have created this demo site to show one of the interactive block features. Here, you can see a number of well-known movies alongside a clickable heart icon on each item. If I press it, the heart count on the corner will increase without reloading the page. And that's all that you can expect from the newest WordPress version 6.5. Which feature did impress you the most? Leave us your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to Hostinger Academy's YouTube channel and turn on those notifications if you wish to get more WordPress development tips and tutorials like this in the future. As always, if you found this video helpful, show some love by giving it a thumbs up and feel free to share with other WordPress friends you know. Thanks for watching and good luck on your online journey.